Well, praise the Lord again. It's that time of the week where we go into the word of the Lord together. Now, prepare your hearts to receive the say Praise the, the Lord. Lord. This is Pastor Woodfield coming to you on this Wednesday, January 21st, 2015, welcoming you to our weekly broadcast. Today, we're going to be talking about something that has been on my heart for quite a few days, and we're going to be looking at John, the 21st chapter, mainly the 22nd verse there, but we'll read a few of the verses prior to that so that you can get the legit of what we're talking about on tonight. So let us pray as we go into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this your day. We thank you for your many manifold blessings unto us. And we thank you for the many things that you're doing in our lives continuously. We thank you for victories that you're bringing us from day to day that come as a result of hearing and studying and following your word. So God, we pray today that you will bless us as we go into your word and be a blessing to the hearers so that it will be a seed planted in good ground that the devil will not be able to snatch out of our hearts those things that that you're beginning to do and the things that you're working out and bringing to reality. So Jesus, we thank you. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. So let us go into the word of the Lord. We're going to be reading from John the 21st. That's the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter. And I'm going to begin reading really at the uh, 18th verse. And then we're going to read down to about the 23rd verse or the 24th verse. So let us begin reading. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spake signifying the death, by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, He said to him, follow me. Then Peter turned around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who has leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. And for emphasis, Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till I come, what is it to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren, among the brethren, that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? And for today's topic, I want to use dangerous assumptions dangerous assumptions. And as you can see through the scripture, there were a group of disciples at the request or at the wordings or the questioning of Jesus Christ by Peter about one particular disciple who is the writer of the book, John himself. And he gives an accounting of that in the latter verses that we did not read. But in your spare time, please read John the 21st chapter in its entirety. So Peter asking Jesus questions after Jesus wanted him to understand that Peter's lot was to follow Jesus even after his death, burial, and resurrection, and that he was to follow him, and that Jesus asked him, if you love me, then you will follow me. But then Peter asked Jesus a question about the disciple whom Peter noticed leaning against Jesus' chest at the dinner or the supper. And he asks about that particular person. And Jesus replied, what is it to you? It's, that's none of your concern. As many of us say, that is none of your business. Only be concerned about the very thing that's important to you and the focus that Jesus Christ would have you to focus in on. Too many times we expend energy and effort and wasted energy and effort can be in concern or showing concern about things that is not any of our business or not meant for us to be involved in or to know about. If it's meant for us to know about or to be involved in, Jesus or the Lord himself will make it clear to us. Many times we involve ourselves in other people's personal business and their affairs instead of following Jesus with all of our heart and all of our mind. And those things serve as a major distraction for us in our lives. 
And not only that, sometimes they lead to even issues and problems and discord and even anger and bitterness and things of that nature. So now Jesus or Peter asks a question and Jesus said it to him that it's none of your concern if he should remain or if I desire for him to remain until I return. Now the disciples standing around heard that and they automatically assumed that Jesus meant that this disciple would remain until Jesus' return, when he returns for the church, when he turn, returns to rapture the church or catch them up in the sky. Now, many people, there are some people that don't believe in the rapture, but the Bible speaks of the rapture, which means he's catching us up to go away with him, to be with him forevermore. Because the Bible does say that there will the trumpet of God sound, and the dead in Christ will arise, and those that are alive will not perceive them, but we shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. That is the scripture. So many of the disciples assume that this is what Jesus meant, that this disciple John would remain alive for hundreds, thousands of years until Jesus' ultimate return to the earth. But assumptions are extremely dangerous because, listen to what happened next, they begin to noise this abroad. They begin to share with one another that this disciple will not remain. Assumptions are the killers to excellent communication, and it's a, it denies facts. Let me say that again. Assumptions, when people assume things that are not real, that are not realistic in its approach, or the practicality of it, they miss the benefit and the advantages of gaining facts. Understand that assumptions destroys multiple relationships and brings us into error when we do not research out the fact or the truth of a matter. Assumptions have destroyed good, wholesome relationships destroyed families, destroyed businesses, destroyed entertainers, destroyed ministries, destroyed even down to a person's well-being, health. And some people have been killed and incarcerated because of assumptions. One of the main things that I often come against is don't assume anything. Get the facts. Ask God to reveal and expose unto you the facts of a situation. There are situations that we deal with as pastors in a counseling setting or pastoral direction based upon your credentials. And you find out that you don't have all the facts and all the details. But yet, as a discerner of facts, of persons, of the Spirit of the living God, and being led by the Spirit of God. This is why it's so important that we, the people of God, the men of God, the servants of the Lord, the women of the Lord, that we pray to God to sharpen our discernment in Him. The spirit of discernment, even as Solomon prayed, you've heard me talk about this often, Solomon prayed that even when the two prostitutes was brought to him, and one's child was killed because she rode over on him and suffocated him and took the child that was alive and replaced the dead child with the live child to the mother whose child was still alive. But yet, 
Solomon acted in wisdom when he asked for a sword to be brought to him to divide the child that was alive, that not that he was going to act upon that. But what was he doing? He was drawing out the emotional attachment to the situation. The emotional attachment to the child or the lack thereof would reveal who the natural mother truly was. And the revelation is that the mother whose child it was said, do not divide the child, but give it to the other mother. And the other mother whose child it wasn't and was still in grief because she lost her child. And because of a horrible thing that she did unconsciously or unknowing, it was not intentional, that she rolled on her child. But because of her grief and her loss and her pain and her agony and her frustration and her love for her child and wanting to have a child alive, but still not dealing with the reality of her thought processes, said divide the child up. And that revealed the hearts of the truth. We must pray for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment, which is wisdom, godly wisdom by the Spirit of God, to understand the truthfulness of a situation and to be able to walk in the truthfulness of that situation to the point that God now is able to usher in and bring healing into those damaged areas of lives, of the lives of God's people. And oftentimes, that takes patience, perseverance, love for God, love for people, love for the word of the Lord, Love for deliverance, love for health, and sanctity, and peacefulness, and all those things which are praiseworthy. To get a person to come to the mindset that assumptions are really verbal, mental, emotional, and can be physical landmines that can erupt abruptly at any time wreaking havoc and damage into unsuspecting as well as suspecting lives. Assumptions have destroyed families, as I mentioned, to the very point that the children and even the parents themselves are emotionally broken for years to come. The pain and agony that exists in people's lives because not only just a lie, but an assumption. Whenever the devil gives you an assumption about a thing and you run with the assumption, you have just taken sides with the devil to do his bidding, to do his will, and you become brother to he who destroys. Because there is a great amount of laziness, slothfulness, that comes to a mind with a person that runs with assumption. Think about it. It is the lazy man's approach to life. It is the lazy person's approach to relationship. And what assumption says to God is that you're not interested in the truth. And the Bible says that his word is truth. His words are our truth. When we crave the truth and desire the truth 
and are compelled by the truth. The truth becomes our guide. And on the inside of our bodies, our spirit and our soul, there is something that will stand up in us and yell out and almost scream and will vex us until the assumption is dispelled. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost craves truthfulness. It craves the truth. And you've heard people say that ultimately truth will always prevail. I am fully of the understanding that truth will always triumph. It may take days. It may take hours. It may take weeks. It may take months. It may take years. It may take decades. But ultimately, the truth will prevail. And this is where the Bible says that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And patience must have its perfect work. Even when you're going through the ill effects of people's assumptions, the way that you should handle it and go through with it and be prosperous in it is to keep a praise on your lips. And childishness or the childish approach to the situation as far away from you as possible. The Bible says this, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I acted like a child. I want to take it further. Even reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, the Bible says, I put away childish things. The things of an immature mindset. Of a developing spirit. And one that has not come to the understanding that there is a better approach. But when you put away childish things, you understand that playtime literally is over. You come to the understanding that prayer time is the focal point or energy to which I expend my rationale to get a positive result out of a negative, adverse situation. And my focus is also upon praise. Because I don't have to wait to see the changing of a situation to understand that I could praise my way out of it in faith. It also lends to the understanding that I also must worship God. I must, I must appreciate him for who he is and not what he can do. I also must learn not to be vindictive in my approaches and in my understanding and in my reaction. I put away the ways of retaliatory actions. It is your right to retaliate, but you have taken it upon yourself that I'm going to relinquish this right to retaliate, to choose the paths of peacefulness and the pursuit of godliness, that my hands will be clean in the very sight of the Lord. That when God begins to deal with the situation, there is either no guilt or minimal guilt on my side or our parts. 
And as he's walking us through the victorious process of an assumption being overturned and the truth coming forth, we must avail our hearts to be able to embrace the changing tide that is before us. How many people cannot embrace the changing tide of what God is doing when he's overturning an assumption, but in the bitterness of their hearts, in the bitterness of their spirit, they're still yet at square one when God is trying to set you free and turn a situation over and cause you to walk in the freedom and the liberty and the glorious kingdom of the sons of God. When God is trying to give you prevailing power, let me say that again because I like that. When God is giving you prevailing power, you must understand that everything else that was in your way previously is being overturned. is being overturned in your favor. And understand that when favor decides to call your name because it has been commanded and demanded by God to move on your behalf, nothing, no one, no demon or devil from hell no angel, no person upon the face of God's green earth can stop favor. Let me, under, let me make this perfectly clear to give a better understanding. When assumptions are overturned, lives are changed and transformed for the better. People begin to walk in victory. Relationships are restored. Chains are broken. Prison doors releases its prisoners. Those that have been bound in the spirit are released to walk unimpeded. Mindsets are changed. Thought processes are improved. Health, physical, natural, and spiritual health improves substantially. People's distorted perspective and outlook on life changes to a wholesome view. And every relationship is not viewed from a perverse, hurt eye, but from the perspective of purity and love and devotion and respect and Dignity. When assumptions are overturned, fruitlessness dissipates and fruitfulness begins in a life to cause them to come to an expected end. When assumptions, listen, are overturned, the communication that flows from mouth to mouth, from ear to ear, from heart to heart, demands accuracy. No longer will we accept the fruits of an assumption of a lie that is intended to destroy and bring destruction and drive a wedge between us as humanity. 
But now we're going to be driven by truth. The Bible says this in Proverbs, the 31st chapter, it relates to a wife and a husband. But it carries much weight into our natural lives. It says this, but the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, in him, in her. But the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her that he has no need of spoil. It means simply this. There are no assumptions and no small foxes that will destroy the vine. I'm not going to go based upon because of the fact that someone has not communicated or has acted or acting a certain way that they're doing something or involved in behaviors or practices that they should not be involved in. Too many times the devil plays with our psyche based upon assumptions. But if we can, if we can learn to overturn those assumptions, and to walk into soundness of mind. When you have a sound mind, when you have a sound mind, you are not easily angered, and nor are you led by assumptions. A sound mind wants the truth. And God wants us all to be of a sound mind. Tune in bi-weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. We'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching our broadcast on social media. If the word of the Lord has been a blessing unto you and your family, consider subscribing to our channel and letting us know that the word of the Lord has been a blessing unto you. Until next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace.